Um, so I am a big, well, let's say advocate or proponent or aficionado, somewhere in between the three. Um, I am a big stan of the blockchain. I think that, I think that the future will be built on the blockchain. Who agrees with me? Thank you very much. I, I, I love you people. Like, we're, we're, we're in agreement. Um, I think that the future will be built on the blockchain. And I think that when this happens, our relationship with crypto is going to change, right? Okay, let me not go too much. This, that's exactly what this panel is about. But like, I love the blockchain and I'm going to say a lot of things, you know, whether you people want to hear it or not. Um, for our next session, we have Ruth Iselema. She's the CEO of Bitmama and she's going to be on a panel with Bolu, senior blockchain reporter at TechPoint, and they're going to be talking about crypto beyond trading. Give them a round of applause, please. And pay attention. I, I like this panel. I like the title of it. Well done, Bolu. Hi, Ruth. Okay, um, I think, good morning everyone. Um, I hope it has been a fantastic um, program so far. So um, for this panel session, we'll be talking about crypto beyond trading. So um, we'll be talking about how we can use cryptocurrencies for more than just trading. I know it might be a little bit far-fetched to say that um, cryptocurrencies can be used for any other thing other than trading. I myself, I don't really think I do any other thing with cryptocurrencies other than, well, I won't say I trade that much, but I owed, typically. So, um, Ruth, yeah, nice to have you here. Yeah, nice to be here. All right. Yeah, so we are talking about cryptocurrency beyond trading, right? And, you know, uh, you know I, I know you agree with me that a lot of people do not realize that crypto can be used for more things you know, more than trading. And that's why you see a lot of noise here and there when they say, okay, the market is down, you know, there's a dip here, they say, you know, I, I, and I think it's important for us to address, you know, the current dip right now. You know, a lot of people are kicking and screaming. I think Bitcoin is what now? I think 39,000, or has it gone down further? <laughs> you know, a lot of people are kicking and screaming and they're like, what's happening? You know, I myself, I've been kicking but I've not, got to the, I've not got into the screaming part. Okay. I hope I don't. Okay. That will probably be when Bitcoin is around $10,000. <laughs> I will cry. <laughs> I will cry. I will definitely cry. So um, I think it's important for us to learn that there are more things we can do, you know, with cryptocurrencies, more than just, you know, um, trading. But before we get into that, uh, let me just ask, why do you think, you know, trading is like the most popular thing people know crypto is used for. Okay. All right, thanks, Bulu. Hello, everyone. Um, so why cryptocurrency and trading seems to be like the most common thing is because uh, I, I would say generally, uh, everybody in Nigeria is a bureau to change. So uh, it, it, start, it doesn't start from one place, so it's there from when maybe you say, oh, Bolu, you have some dollars, give me dollars, I will change to Naira for you. So at the end of the day, with cryptocurrency, trading is the most prominent thing that everybody knows. And um, we have people that are Forex traders, right? So trading cryptocurrency and trading Forex is like a little bit similar. So they are more accustomed to the um, trading signals and every other thing that comes with it. So most times when people want to introduce you to uh, crypto trading or cryptocurrency, the first thing they introduce you to is trading, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's quite interesting. Yeah, so I'm also curious, um, how did you get into crypto yourself? Uh, uh, you know, you said a lot of people get into crypto through trading and things like that. Yeah, how was it for you, you know, getting into it and, you know, seeing, I'm sure you've seen 
different generations of dips and eyes and dips. How was getting into crypto for you? Well, it's still the same way. I got in via trading. Um, I think that was far back as um, late 2016. So I got into uh, crypto trading then and um, tried my hands out with a few things, tried out the technology, tried to know more. Because even with me, as, as I back then, I, I had to ask myself that, look, is it just about trading? Like, what is the blockchain technology itself? Like, what more can it do? What's, how can we harness it further? Rather than just maybe doing buy and sell and trading from one place or that. So I had to ask myself uh, all those questions early on. And I think that helped me to also uh, fashion the trajectory that I wanted to follow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So before we get into, you know, other use cases proper, um, right now, you know, there's, there's a serious dip right now. What are you doing? What are you doing about that right now? Are you kicking and screaming like me? Or how are you handling it? Okay. Um, for the dip, it's the usual market correction, right? I, I can't say or I can't predict and tell anyone that, oh, in April it will come up. Please don't take my word for it. Just do your own research. Uh, but the market dips and goes up. It's normal. It's absolutely normal. But for this main time, something else that one can do is you can check out other use cases. You could go into the DeFi ecosystem, the whole lending and uh, borrowing ecosystem. It brings and yields a lot of results. Uh, many people farm on DeFi too. That does not um, really move according to price movement. Yeah. Then the usual one that is up now, which is NFTs, you could look for a good NFT project. Uh, if you feel you want to get in, you try and get in as early as possible. Um, I think one example of one NFT that is really doing well is the Bird Ape uh, Yacht Club. Yeah. So imagine you got in very early when it was like 0 0.08 uh, dollars. You would be saying another story today. So. Um, even though it moves, those ones, they move according to volume and how well or how strong the team um, is. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So speak, talking about um, use cases, you know, what are crypto use cases that we can apply to the real world? You know, like things we do normally, but then, uh, you know, financial activities we do normally, or maybe beyond even financial activities that we do normally, that we can apply cryptocurrencies to? Okay. Um, so right now, there are lots of blockchain use cases, and I'm even happy there are more startups that are coming up in the ecosystem that are um, doing something with blockchain. So some people are now using um, the blockchain to record ledgers for farming, they use it for housing, digital records, and um, you also have the DeFi, which is the lending. So is it that it's collateralized or not? So um, I think we are one of the people that only offer non-collateralized crypto loans on our platform. Other platforms offer um, collateralized ones. So it means you need to have BTC to come and take like a fiat value of that money so you have to drop a collateral to be able to get it but I, on our platform we don't ask you for collateral we allow you to borrow um, money for crypto for a certain period of time so to say you're assuming that um, I don't have money to buy crypto right now so but if you come on our platform this mama we give you the first trench 50 to 100 dollars when you pay that back then we keep on increasing your limit. Okay, wow, that's, that's quite interesting. So there's lending in crypto now. Yes. Okay, that's interesting. But um, I think you agreed with me that um, there is a level of complexity when it comes to um, using some of these. I think you mentioned DeFi earlier. And, you know, I myself, I, I, I tried my hands on some 
you know, other use cases beyond trading. I think there was a time I tried, you know, buying NFTs and I underestimated gas fees, you know, things like that. And, you know, I ended up losing, you know, Ethereum that I've been holding since when Ethereum was about $300. And, you know, it was quite sad. So there's a level of complexity when it comes to using, you know, these platforms. So how would you advise people to tackle them? And also, how do we make these things more similar for, uh, simpler for people to use? Okay. Um, in the case of um, Ethereum, uh, I know the gas fees are high. So only do it <laughs> if you have at enough money. Risk. At your own risk. Exactly. So, um, and another thing you could do, the other blockchains that offer NFTs, we have um, the Solana blockchain, Polygon, which has Matic, and um, Celo blockchain. So they have their own um, NFTs on them, and fees are as low as $0.01. So um, you could try out those. It may not be as profitable as the Ethereum ones, but at least it gives some level of profit at the end of the day. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, um, which of these use cases do you think is most likely to catch on, you know, in this part of the world, Nigeria, Africa? Which of these use cases do you think people will, you know, really, let me use, vibe with? Okay. I think I'm going to go with um, lending and borrowing. Because, um, you know, we have a bad credit system as it is already. But with crypto or DeFi, you can have a lending system where people don't have to collateralize things and worry about them. So, but now, um, since most people are still trying to learn what DeFi or crypto is about, those that already know now would mean they would have to build out um, platforms where you have this DeFi at the back, FinTech at the front kind of thing. So you don't really know that you are using DeFi, but all you just know is that this platform is lending and borrowing. And even though I give them my money, I get a certain percentage of yield after a period of time. Okay, so um, you would advise against using, you know, the decentralized platforms and probably do it safer more on centralized platforms, right? Yeah, if you know what you're doing, no problem, go ahead. But if you don't know what you're doing, it's better you just um, start out little by little. Okay, yeah. um, I think this will be um, the second to the final question. So um, which of these you know, other use cases, have you tried yourself, and how was it for you personally? Okay, so, <laughs> currently, I've, I've tried out a lot. Yeah, I've, uh, like you said, I've also tried out my hands on getting some NFTs recently to also look at the ecosystem. Yeah, done some DeFi, um, definitely do some remittance too. Um, yeah. I, I think those are like the three main things I've tried out and it seems to be good. Okay. Okay. I think that will be all our questions for now. It seems we are running out of time. All right. So um, thank you, everyone. Please, a round of applause for Ruth. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Oh, okay. Hold on. Okay. So we'll take two questions, two very quick questions. Um, if you have a question, raise your hand, and please come. Second, okay, okay, and you, please come to the stage. Thank you. Okay, before they come, Ruth, so if somebody is trying to um, get an understanding of, for a newbie, where should they look to understand crypto? The basics. Like, what's a knowledge resource that you can just tell people that, you know, they'll type in something and get a sense of what they are supposed to do? Okay. Um, I'm going to say for trying out or learning, there are lots of resources. Um, you could always use Google, but definitely a lot of resources always come out. So, but most times, the best place to get um, 
comprehensive knowledge is maybe resources from exchanges or crypto news platforms. Yeah, though, those will try their possible So, best. is there one you can mention now? Just mention one. Uh, of course, Bitmama. <laughs> wow. wow. Why didn't I see that coming? <laughs> okay. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Israel. So, I want to know um, what you think about the future of enterprise blockchain in terms of you mentioned Ledger. Yeah, in, in need of blockchain. So I want to think of what you, th what you think about the prospects of enterprise blockchain. Okay. Okay. In the case of enterprise blockchain, yeah, I, I see it doing well too. So like in the case of our e-Naira, so they used an enterprise blockchain, which is like the Hyperledger um, blockchain. So it's ma mainly going to be for banks and government because they will be using like, um, they won't be using a decentralized ledger, right? They'll be using a centralized ledger where they can control and keep track of everything. So um, it's definitely going to do well, but not with the public, just with the governments and banks and maybe a few other uh, bigger organizations. So do you see enterprise blockchain driving sectors like food and agriculture? Mm, it's possible. Like um, a company like uh, PZ okay. and the rest of them, yeah, they want to use enterprise blockchains to be able to track where most of their raw materials are coming from, where they source it, and all that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, my name is Lulu Mokhtar, and um, A is something that I've I just thought about. So. NFTs are registered on the blockchain, right? Yes. And they are unique, and because of that, we expect that they are going to protect intellectual property. Say, for example, if I take a picture of a body ape now, and then I crop it, or I reshape it, if I take a picture of a body ape NFT, yes. and I crop or reshape it, automatically the properties have changed. Isn't it? No. It hasn't? No, it hasn't. So, okay, I'm just trying to say if there's an event that happens to change the property of the NFT, will it still continue to be registered with the same um, identity on the blockchain or will it be registered as an entirely new NFT? Yes. So, thanks for the question. So, it's going to be registered more as a counterfeit because the people that issued the original NFT, um, they already have a particular number, or most times they do 10,000, but some have still reducing the numbers nowadays. So they will have a particular number, it's 10,000. They have something called rarity. So you know how rare and all the features of each and every one of those NFTs that were issued on that smart contract. So if you change the properties of one of them and you put it on another smart contract to be a look-alike of the original one, it's just going to show as a counterfeit. Remember, with the blockchain, um, the essence of the ledger is that all of us in this room have to agree that this thing is real. So if only you agree that this thing is real, and 99% of people agree that this thing is not real, your block will be skipped and it won't be mined. So you're not on the blockchain. Thank you very much, Ruth. Yeah. Thank you, um, Bolu. Please give yeah. them a round of applause. Move closer to the front for a picture. Picture, you and Bolu. Yes, please. Okay.